Well, both, thank you very much, both um, uh, Mark and Angela. And, and a very, very early morning to those who have joined us from San Francisco. I see, and I see Jeff Kripal is also on the call, and it's very, very early for him as well. So we really appreciate that. And my, my, one of my friends wrote a book, a children's book, and he said the boys got up earlier than anyone had ever got up before. That seems to apply to you. Um, I just thought I'd put a, <clears throat> um, an image in here um, from a walk I had in the Udini Lakes in the Rila Mountains in 2017. And it's, it's quite a, a nice parable for what we're <clears throat> talking about this morning, which is the light beam coming down. Uh, I don't quite know how it happened. I spent the whole day on my own, um, and it was one of the best days I've, I've ever spent um, in terms of a walk um, in the mountains. And so this is associated with Peter Dunoff, the, <clears throat> the great Bulgarian sage. So I just wanted to, uh, I'm just going to go through a few slides here to, just to build on some of the things that have already been said. And I, while, while uh, Angela was speaking, I put in Proclus um, as a parallel to these three eyes or lenses, you might say, of St. Bonaventure in the middle of the 13th century. We're looking at number three first, the eye of sense. This is where she started with the sense senses and this, the object of the, the statue, which is empiricism and taking things literally. And then moving on to the eye of reason, and which is mathematics, logic, and dianoia or analysis. And, and then finally to the eye of contemplation, representing what is literally uh, or that traditionally known as the intellect, uh, which I, I define as our capacity to apprehend and be the oneness, which represents also gnosis uh, corresponding to nous, the higher mind, and the experience of the non-dual. And this, this kind of knowledge has always been demoted by uh, dogma and uh, the uh, materialistic understanding of mechanistic understanding of modern science and psychology. Um, so it's the inner experiential knowing and these, these, this non-dual knowing, which is regarded as, as, as merely anecdotal, uh, when in fact it's the foundation of all the knowledge that we can, we can have. And this is strongly argued by, by Peter Kingsley in his book, Catafalque. And so you can see that the modern science tends to look only through the lenses of the reason and the sense, and these, which means you're missing this, this inner eye, this eye of the heart, and which Angela and, uh, has been referring to, and using another of our great thinkers, Ian McGilchrist, um, we're, we're living in a left hemisphere dominated culture, um, which, which, is, which is, uses this mechanistic idea and the idea that we humans are nothing more than complex biological machines to be controlled and manipulated. And this is what the great reset of Klaus Schwab seems to me to be about. So this is a way of knowing that, that removes the, the observer, the knower, the subject, and consciousness, and when wonders why it can't be found. And Schrodinger says this in his Nature and the Greeks. So Peter Kingsley says that the West has suffered a metaphysical amputation with the suppression of gnosis in favor of pistis or belief, and now unbelief. And this is the great book by Peter Kingsley, which I can't recommend too highly, um, Catafalque, which I reviewed last summer. And, and it's two volumes, and the second volume is entirely references and notes. Um, now, here's another perspective from the great Indian philosopher, Sarvapali Radhakrishnan, who was also president of India after being the, the first spalding uh, chair of Eastern religions and ethics of Oxford. And so he talks about these levels in a similar way. We have sense experience, then we have discursive reasoning, analysis and synthesis. So we're knowing a thing and being it are different, and therefore you require verification and proof. So this is structurally built into this level of discursive reasoning. Whereas with, the, with intuitive apprehension, you become one with the reality. It's knowledge by being, by identity, not through senses or symbols, as, as Angela was showing at these other levels. And it's a state of mind rather than, a, or state specific, as Charlie Tart would say, rather than being a definition of an object. And he said that intuition gives us an idea of the whole and intellect an analysis of the parts. I would say reason and analysis of the parts. So here's another, uh, another three sources really saying much the same thing. Um, Walter Russell from um, his huge book, The Universal One, which nobody knows about or has read, 
uh, not even me, <clears throat> 1928. And then he says that all this is his experience, that his knowledge exists in the mind universe of light. Notice the equivalence of knowledge and light. And that the, the all mind is one mind. All the new thought thinkers said this. We don't have separate minds. Schrodinger also said this. And so you become one with the source. And then by doing this, you have this knowledge, this gnosis by identity. And then in another place, he says that cosmic consciousness is the goal of human development, which I profoundly believe myself. So you individuals then become aware of, uh, of their oneness with the universal mind and note can manifest genius. And he, he was an extraordinary genius. And he said, uh, genius is self-bestowed and mediocrity is self-inflicted. Uh, Aldous Huxley in his book, Perennial Philosophy, says that knowledge is a function of being. So it's the level of being which determines what you're able to apprehend. So if there's a change of being, there's a corresponding change in knowing. And we've already heard this quote from Eckhart, but I love it as a reflexive reciprocal um, statement. The eye with which I see God is the same eye with which God sees me or sees in me. And this is just to emphasize the nature of gnosis here as lived experience of spiritual regeneration. Filaramo, Giovanni Filaramo is one of the great scholars of Gnosis and Elaine Pagel's The Gnostic Gospels, 1979. And note this very clear statement here, to know means to become the same reality that is known, removing the dichotomy between subject and object. And this is what happens to people in, in, in mystical experience, in near-death experience, and this is what is transformative. It's emphatically the case uh, this is the mystical sense of oneness, which is deeply transformative. And you find this also in the latest research done on psychedelics. And so the emphasis here is on experience, not doctrine, this inner knowing. So the dogma and the doctrine are simply the outer shell, it's the exoteric, whereas the, the exoteric is relative and the esoteric is, is the essence. And that, that's really what we crave for. We crave for the essence, for the center, not just for the surface shell. Pagel says gnosis is self-knowledge and knowledge of the self, almost in a Jungian sense. So the, the key thing here is what's the status of this knowledge? And this is what Jeff Kripal, which I wrote about in the last editorial, they put so um, eloquently. Experiences exist. Uh, or are they significant for our understanding, our very understanding of reality? And that's my view, that they, these experiences are significant for our very understanding of reality. And we really need to get this as a culture if we're going to get ourselves back on track and, and root ourselves properly um, in nature and in the transcendent. So Pagel's writes, to know oneself at the deepest level is simultaneously to know God. So what can say I am in you, this is Thomas Troward, is the same as what can say I am in me. So the I am stands for this center this divine burning bush i am that i am we are that ourselves and so so is everyone else i just wanted to bring in gertian science here as another angle uh, on what we're talking about and um, and what he talks about is this delicate um in, in empiricism the german word is zart which i rather like and this is status empiris uh, and he said, you, we need to develop these new organs of cognition or perception in order to understand things in their becoming. And he emphasized, and we had a presentation from LF Trust this week on, on Brian Goodwin. He emphasized um, the importance of this sort of Gnostic approach to science, where you go beyond observation, which is detaching yourself from what you're observing. Let's say you're observing a plant. Um, to contemplating it, and you can, and the, when you contemplate uh, an object or when you contemplate a flower, then it it reveals its beauty, and and we <clears throat> we are susceptible to this this beauty, and the more beautiful world that we know in our hearts as possible, as Charles Eisenstein says, and so what Goethe was able to understand was this dynamic of becoming, unfolding, emergence, and metamorphosis which is also the process of death and rebirth, which I'll finish on uh, in a moment. And so these, are, these next two slides are a, what I call a binary simplification. I, it really should be put into this fourfold model that Angela was talking about. Uh, 
but on the left you have this the the the, the, the knowledge by identity and the the holistic as opposed to the analytical and on the right you have the 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 corresponding left hemisphere if you like mode and which is equally important it's not that one should say let's let's stay on the left hand side and and get rid of the right and we need our intuition combined with reason and the very existence of the network is is contrived to combine this intuitive um sense with with reason and, and, and analysis and logic so where deep knowing meets meets the deep inner knowing meets meets rigorous analysis um, meditation and measurement they both have the same root um, and uh, and then i continue quality quantity of science of qualities brian goodwin talked about whereas quantification and measurement inner and outer essence and form experience and proof direct and indirect um, whole part and then being and doing again we've got far too much emphasis on on doing in our western um, you know, mad rush uh, society and not enough on being which centers ourselves and this applies particularly to young people they're so busy doing they can't have time for being and so um, this is my my final slide i think we're in a we're in a a process of metanoia which partly means to go beyond the mind but it's what is tra translated as as conversion or re represents conversion in the new testament and um, this repentance and rethinking process of death and rebirth which goethe understood so i think we have an extraordinary depth of crisis here um, and what what is trying to happen is that the system is trying to go back to what it was um, but with a, a much greater integration of technology and, and the, the the capacity for surveillance is already very widespread but it will become even more so with 5g and internet of things as explained in jeremy you know, nadler's new book the struggle for a human future and and so we are desperately in need of the the kind of worldview that we've been talking about while articulating um today it, it, as a renewal of our spiritual ecological social and political and economic systems and um, and we're being put under pressure at the moment we had we had uh, jim garrison on humanity rising uh, on our uh, platform this week and he said well, i don't think that i think that there's going to be a rising sense of tensions with with multiple um issues coming up from all directions and, and we can see this in in how that things are being polarized when when we actually need to come together we need to remember our humanity and forget the rest as einstein and russell said in the 1950s and so many people think that we might be heading for extinction but i think we need to just choose transformation rather than extinction um, but we also need to stand up and be that love and freedom in the face of these plans for manipulation and control and i can't emphasize this enough that the the 80 not only the the spiritual identity is something we need to be able to assert our transcendent essence um, as, as i would put it uh, which is based in this these principles of, of love and freedom but we need we need to to realize that um if we don't do this and, and stand up for the 18th century ideals which which western culture um, express in which Voltaire and, and Diderot and many others even though they were humanists in some senses but they they stood up they stood up for the human and this is what we need to to do now um, and uh, I root that in this realization of gnosis um, that there is there is only one life there is only one consciousness so we are one another if everybody realized that then our systems could be transformed extremely rapidly so I think we need a planetary ethic of care and interconnectedness, uh, which brings in the wisdom of the heart. And this last line here uh, is a phrase that I've been developing with Anne Baring, um, following the Jim Garrison talk on Wednesday evening. And because what, what I think we need to develop um, is, is a new narrative, a new story, um, because what's, being, what's, what's predominating in the media at the moment um, is a particular story, a particular version of events, a particular characterization of what a human being is. And it's only, it's only part of the truth. 
and in, in many respects it's also distorted and, and so we're in a kind of spiritual emergency um, I think at the moment and um, where as, as a species and, and the, the people who are able to understand these things deeply and articulate them and there are many of them on this call um, we we need to come together uh, to be able to formulate this <clears throat> this new narrative um, which Anne and I um, may think if we get the new three R's reconnect renew and regenerate and it's we don't just need sustainable development we need regenerative development we need to regenerate nature we need to regenerate the seas regenerate the soil regenerate the forests and damn it we generate ourselves <clears throat> and here is my last slide going back to the <clears throat> the Odini Lakes which is my spiritual home. So the five principles that we need to come back to, the do not principles, love, wisdom, truth, justice, and goodness. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. And this really matters. We profoundly appreciate you conveying that to us. Um, and what a rich agenda um, has been set up now. We're gonna have a quick comfort break. Um, we're gonna come back at 11.15 on the dot. If you can, take a step outside and feel this living light, and which at this time of year speaks of this metanoia as well as other times of year. So go and have a good break. Feel this living world in which we live if you can. And we'll see you to develop some of these ideas with practices because direct knowing is key in all this. So this is going to be like the second part of our day today. Um, we'll see you at 11.15.